Hi everybody, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show. This is the February episode, episode number 28. So what moved the sciences for the last month, right? In January, what really happened? So let's see it. Uh, before that, I would like to share uh, two good news from my side. I'm now a full professor. So, uh, you know, I've been waiting for this news to come. So I've been now promoted, uh, rather appointed as the professor in Central University of Punjab. And I also got uh, into the uh, very famous society in London called Linnaean Society. So Linnaean Society is a very prestigious. Uh, you know, if you look back in history, Charles Darwin and Robert Brown and uh, J.B.S. Haldane, all those, uh, you know, stalwarts of sciences were fellows of uh, the Linnaean Society. Edward Jenner too, the vaccine, you know, the discoverer, isn't it? So, yeah, as a fellow, I feel really privileged and some of the members of our Young Academy have helped me to vote for me in the election held last week. And it works like this, you apply for it and then they will look at your credentials and you need two-third majority among the existing fellows in the election held, uh, I think, three times a year. And if uh, if you won the election, then you, you can use the post-dominal title, uh, you know, FLS, that is Fellow of Linnaean Society. So these two are really big news, what has happened in uh, my life for the last one month, you know, both happened in the first month of 2022. So I'm really excited to share this with you. So what else did I learn for the last one month? You know, so the story. So let's, uh, let's see the recap, the news stories. Uh, one of the biggest story which I read, it, it completely changed my perspective. Is a story. It's a geology. Uh, it's a story by the ET at Zurich uh, team uh, in Science Advances. That if you look uh, uh, in future, two hundred million years, we never knew that humanity will exist, right? Even one million. Forget one million. Even next or uh, five hundred years, can the humanity be there? But anyway. If you look 200 million years from today uh, into the future, then what is going to happen is that India, Somalia and Madagascar may join to form one continent through, you know, through the western cuts of uh, South India, you know. They said from Trivandrum, you know, that uh, that thing will join with the Somalian um, trans uh, uh, African mountains. So it is very, very interesting news that is really interesting, isn't it? And next thing which I learned is that, of course, the news from the last week is uh, the giant ice fish breeding colony has discovered in Antarctic, you know, be, uh, beneath the Antarctic ice shelf, uh, a giant colony of ice fish. Very interesting, isn't it? So uh, through the podcast, especially Naked Scientists and Science Friday, the two things which I never miss out, I learned uh, about uh, a, a new interest on self-spreading vaccine, that is recombinant vaccines for the wildlife. Well, I never thought of that. Wildlife, you're vaccinating the wildlife. Of course, there has been some, uh, you know, some developments, a field of, uh, 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 re, you know, uh, releasing the recombinant mosquitoes that are natural resistant towards the, the malarial parasite. They will not harbor the malarial parasite, you know. Remember, mosquitoes, of course, you need to have, to, you know, they are the vectors of malaria, right? And if the parasite cannot attach itself to the uh, mosquitoes, then... Uh, you can curtail the malaria, right? So such, uh, you know, such developments happened earlier on. But now there is a renewed interest on uh, this kind of recombinant uh, vaccines, uh, basically the gene-mediated vaccines, isn't it? And you are releasing that to the wildlife. Of course, uh, it's always, you know, a two-sided story, isn't it? So there is a lot of ethics uh, involved with this kind of uh, happening, but there are actually a lot of groups working on it and they have a lot of interesting papers published last month about this particular thing. And I also heard about this shark cannibalism inside the womb. So, you know, the mommy shark and it's her womb. They, they have more than one womb. I never knew that. And, the, the, uh, and of course, each womb will have its, uh, you know, it, the, the uterus, the, you know, more than one uterus. And the womb would be from different fathers, you know. And the, the, the eldest one, the, the baby shark, can actually swim inside the womb to go to the next womb and third womb. And they eat up its siblings. <laughs> Never knew that, but it's very interesting. Isn't the story is pretty interesting. And the last month we have seen that Neocov, a lot of talk 
going on in the media especially here in india about the new variant which discovered in africa by wuhan science same scientist and they says that the, uh, it's very infectious and uh, extremely lethal uh, uh, you know some news says that i think it's in india today i read uh, you know three times more death is expected from neocov but all these are fake friends neocov is it has been detected way back in 2011 you know 10 years back in bats and uh, the new uh, preprint has released last month that is what has happened and it says that only few more mutations till it becomes infectious in human being of course a lot of such infectious uh, wild infectious diseases are there uh, which is short of few mutations and all these are just hypothesis and as of now not a single case in human being neocov2 uh, or neocov and there is nothing to be you know worried about this particular thing and also we have seen about omicron's new subtype called ba2 remember ba1 subtype is common everywhere but now uh, the new subtype has come ba2 of course the subtypes keep on coming and new variants keep on coming that is what we are expecting isn't it so nothing to be worried about and last month we have also seen that james webb has launched and now it has reached its final destination at least the orbital l2 you know so that is almost 1.5 million kilometers from the surface of the earth so those are the news from the last week and now coming to the discoveries what really uh, uh, the published peer reviewed studies right so one interesting thing uh, which i re read in the last month is about the psychology study it's about the people obsessed with celebrities celebrities as in uh, musicians or actors or even you know uh, politicians or religious leaders you know and if you are obsessed with worshiping these celebrities you are prone to have low iq you know so intelligence level of those people who worship the celebrities are low that is a very interesting landmark study published last month next is the chemical pollution it has now omnipresent friends and it has passed a safe limit for humanity world over you know so that is one of the topic which comes again and again in curiosity show you know uh, yeah so that is uh, that's really profound and if you see that the report it says that total mass of plastics have now exceeds the total mass of all living mammals animal big animals you know so that much is the plastic pollution right and forever chemical we have seen that in, in this show right forever chemicals that is basically the the cosmetics you can see uh, in a human diet and even human blood you can see that kind of chemicals everywhere so it, it has crossed the safe limit it's really alarming we really need to go organic isn't it so the third story is that women vaccinated against covid-19 transfer the antibodies that sars cov2 antibodies to their breastfed infants potentially giving the babies passive immunity against the coronavirus so that is really interesting so the babies up to the month of 23 23rd month that is almost 2 years babies are protected from covid uh, covid 19 because of this passive immunity conferred through the breast feeding then immediately i was thinking about how about formula they will miss out friends breast feeding is really important na huh? formula means like cerilac or whatever Uh, the stuff that you put in isn't it the uh, reconstituted milk uh, doesn't confer the uh, immunity at all and now okay antibody just by drinking antibody babies are getting protected huh? how about uh, you know introducing this antibody in say smoothies so that we can drink yeah that will definitely that will be right but i don't know exactly how it works but if you actually drink some antibodies whatever the, the uh, premix b it gets digested in our intestine right so you need to actually formulate in such a way that it doesn't get digested but gets absorbed you know so it's really intricate but still it can work but of course you need a constant supply of milk isn't it like the, the infants they they drink they breastfeed for uh, uh, you know so many times in a day right it's not just like one times uh, you know drinking smoothie doesn't confer the protection Uh, and next one is about the, the the diet again if the americans the study was held in america swapped one serving of beef per day for chicken so instead of burger of course the burger is made of beef isn't it so instead of the the normal burger which is beef based if they swap for the chicken based burger 
then the diet's greenhouse gas emission, that is the, the carbon footprint, would fall by average 48 percentage. That is, they can reduce 50 percentage of diet-based uh, emissions and carbon dioxide CO2 footprint just by swapping this beef uh, with uh, chicken. Very interesting, right? And also by the carb, the, the water usage, 30% because the, the red meat and of course the, the buffaloes and cattle needs a lot of water, right? Passively, of course, you, you need water for the, the, the field, the grass, and then of course, you know, so it's really complicated, right? And also by replacing a serving of shrimp with cod. So shrimp also is, uh, uh, you know, it needs a lot of um, input, the, the carbon extensive, Right? It's intensive. With cod, reduce the greenhouse emissions by 35, 34% and replacing dairy milk with soy milk result in 8% reduction. All these are some baby steps towards minimizing your carbon footprint. And another story is again it's alarming that antibiotic resistance killed more people than malaria or AIDS in 2019 uh, because the reports are only now start emerging, right? Uh, so it's lagging three years but yeah that is a that's a trend now antibiotic resistance is now getting really uh, prominent all around the world you know so if you combine malaria and aids together also the death is less than antibiotic resistance so uh, yeah i mean that made me think of like a future is this the future that you will be afraid of even going for a surgery you know so if antibiotic resistance became all pervasive surgery will not be working right how can you go for a surgery right so that is going to be really tough so that will actually pull us back to pre-antibiotic era pre-penicillin era you know uh, that's tough sixth story is that the teens who are addicted to tiktok experience worse depression anxiety and in turn reduced working memory capacity that's tough the social media has you know if you are really addicted to social media especially tiktok and yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, that will have the impact on your emotional well-being as well as, you know, might be a factor for depression and anxiety. And this thought of me like the, the usual short, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the social media is short form, right? Or all these are short content, Twitter, for example, 160 character and TikToks are really short. So how about the long reads? I really love long reads like you know the pocket i save most of these uh, long articles into the pocket and pocket is hooked up with my kindle so i can read kindle whenever i'm free like in a garden right so uh, or uh, open ed uh, you know uh, opinion and editorial in the newspaper so those are long reads and nobody has the attention these days to read that kind of long reads right so because of the short attention spans you know so that is something uh, we have to be worried about especially for the teens you know but beware of confounding i was thinking about it is it because the tiktok videos lead the teens to depression or the vice versa is it because the teens are getting depressed or depressed teens are more uh, you know more prone to watch tiktok videos well we don't know that is called statistical confounding right correlation doesn't mean causation that is a fundamental principle of statistics isn't it so beware of it then seven stories about the school days uh, should begin later in the morning again and again the result says the same thing you know if you start early so uh, you know especially the young adults really need uh, sleep in the morning for their emotional well-being as well as for the you know uh, for the better development of their brain you know neuronal system and school closures uh, during the covid-19 had a negative uh, effect on the health and well-being of many young people but homeschooling also had positive flip side so negative because especially lower income groups cannot afford a, a tutor you know so they miss out and also digital divide all these are negative digital divide means digital haves and digital have nots people with a good broadband internet connection and devices and gadgets and people without isn't it but it also has the positive effect positive impact of this lockdown what is that thanks to sleeping longer in the morning teenagers reported improved health and health related quality of life <coughs> so this uh, argue in favor of later opening so unfortunately you know in the winter 
uh, school students wait for the school bus even at uh, 6 15 uh, 6 30 i feel really sad about that you know this it's better for them to sleep you know they should act for waiting for the bus at 6 15 they might be waking up at five o'clock isn't it to get ready and all those things so it's not good you know so authorities should think about it really and eight stories that, that about the coffee brazil which is uh, the currently world's largest coffee producer will see its most suitable coffee growing land decline by 79 percentage because of the climate change so climate change will have impact on the coffee production as well as you know many of the related uh, plant species like cocoa you know theobroma cocoa right so cocoa the chocolate isn't it the seeds from which the, the chocolate is being built uh, made from and avocado and cashew all these productions will see a decline in the coming uh, decades because of the climate change and its cost will boost up skyrocket you know and uh, of course there are scientists working on climate resilient varieties of the, the coffee that is coffee astinophila that is a new variety which is purported to be climate resilient you know uh, but not much uh, I mean the production is really tougher this this particular variety it, you cannot the yield is very less that is that is a catch here nine stories that the scientists have identified a specific gene uh, you know so that is basically two prime to five prime oligo adenylate synthase one that is a variant of that uh, particular gene that is the variant of this gene is called SNPRS 10 77 46 71 complicated name but it's just one mutation mutation is that a to g you know adenine to guanine mutation that protects against severe covid19 infection so if you have your genome sequenced and at this particular gene and if you have a g in place of g a at that particular single nucleotide polymorphism then you are better protected from covid19 that is the new research says very interesting isn't it so there are commercial uh, whole genome sequencing or at least the uh, genotyping platforms in the US like 23andMe. Here in India, it is not that common, but of course you can get your genotype gen genotyping done. I don't think it's that expensive, maybe 5,000 rupees. I haven't done yet, so I'm really looking forward to. If you know some genotyping firms that can do uh, genotyping at an uh, economical way here in India, please put that in the comments uh, down below, okay? And yeah, so if you have that mutation, then you are much protected. So it's basically the new Neanderthal ancestry, you know. So the, a particular DNA segment inherited from the Neanderthals have 20 percentage of lower risk of developing critical COVID-19 infection. So the next story, 10 story, is that the new artificial leaf that's that can sequester carbon dioxide hundred times better than the current system so it is a very interesting paper it's basically a nanotechnology isn't it uh, the uh, the work has been done in the university of illinois in chicago and the group was led by a faculty it's an indian origin faculty's name is manish singh very interesting work and the cost the estimated cost of this particular uh, uh, technology is uh, 145 us dollar per ton of carbon dioxide so a turn of CO2 to sequester, you need to spend 145 US dollars. Is it expensive? Well, kind of expensive, but it's not too expensive. But yeah, I hope it gets reduced. It's a ton of CO2, you see. So it is much better than the existing technology. So the basically how it works is uh, about uh, ion exchange. You know, the CO2 gets trapped into the cells and absorbed by a dry organic solutions to form the bicarbonate ions. No, and then this iron migrate across a membrane and get dissolved into a liquid solution to the concentrated CO2. So that is how this technology works. Have a look at the linked up paper down below for all links and show notes of this show. And 11 stories about the foreign aid. So this payment to these NGOs in eight dependent countries is correlated with, you know what, sharp increases in De bank deposits in offshore financial centers it's like swiss bank account right the offshore centers like manama paper you might have seen that that is alarming so that means that poor countries which are dependent on the aid for example afghanistan they gets money 
and whenever the money is in flow to afghanistan afghanistan based offshore deposit also increases so that means that most of the money are being diverted into a few hands you know so 7.5 percentage of the aid appears to be captured by the local elites corruption you know so that is really alarming and the 12th story is again a depressing story the transgender individuals die twice likely uh you know so twice likely to die early as the general population so they are really faster to die you know uh, younger so that is really tough you know so early death for the transgender and why it is so we don't know yet we need further research is it social a uh, phenomenon or is it biological phenomenon we all have to know it you know further research is needed for uh, bringing up the intricacies of it and final story of the uh, you know of this particular episode this ep ep episode is about the smoking so smoking like drinking is also associated with people think that okay if you drink it's good for the so social it's like social lubricant isn't it but studies have shown the other way and now the new study has shown that even smoking uh you know so linking smoking with social lubricant is flawed smokers are more likely to develop loneliness as they grow up you know so that is what very interesting story so the idea of smoking as a sociable pastime may be a myth check out that story okay and uh, of course we do have a facebook group and check out the stories and a lot more stories are being shared there by enthusiastic volunteers uh, you know so please do check out the stories in uh, facebook group too young academy of india you can search it out and now coming to the observances general observances in february february 2nd is world wetlands day you know and on the same day is also called human fraternity day highlight the importance of the the human to human right human beings are a lot more important love for other human being right rather than uh, you know the myth like religion or uh, uh, you know uh, politics or nationality but love for other human should be on the top that is the un observance is all about the human fraternity day 10th is world pulses day 11th is women and girls in science we really need more women and girls in the science 13th is world radio day and 20th is social justice day 21st is mother language day and 28th here in india is national science day and uh, i work here in central university of punjab and our foundation day also coincides with national science day so the national science day here in india is the the reason why we are celebrating on 28th feb is that the day that c v raman discovered the raman effect you know so he is uh, he was uh, the science nobel right the physics nobel laureate raman effect isn't it so that is why we are celebrating on 28th of february every year national science day now coming to astronomy related Uh, events of course all these are binocular events uh, you need an app uh, to better let you spot all these uh, events no sky view is what i recommend again it's a free wear eighth is mercury uh, you know good uh, for the highest latitude in uh, in the morning you know morning time the mercury and ninth is venus so you, all these planets you can observe uh, during uh, the coming uh, month you know 8th for mercury 9th for venus 13th is a very interesting you can see the venus and mars conjunction so both these planets in the same frame and 16th is snow moon you know the full moon of january as per the uh, you know red in the almanac is snow moon you know 16th is the snow moon 17th is mercury the highest elongation in the west the best day for to to spot the mercury and 20th is venus during the morning hours you can spot venus on 20th of feb and 27th is moon mars and venus conjunction all these three celestial objects will come together in one frame you can spot them all that's on 27th of feb i hope you will have a great time uh, watching sky watching throughout this month of feb you know 
and of course we do have several opportunities of this month and that also include three quiz competitions that I'm conducting here in Central University it's the international quiz please do come forward and participate you know only 30 questions multiple choice through Mentimeter that I'm going to conduct here on 23rd 24th and 25th cash prizes you know and this is in connection with the science day national science week celebration you know so all these are science themed quiz and uh, please come forward and do subscribe to our uh, you know this uh, curiosity channel as well as curiosity the young academy of india facebook group uh, to get updated you know there is a curiosity google group so please be part of the google group to stay updated of these things right these uh, the events right and uh, yes uh, all the the show notes and links to the, the original uh, stories that I covered in this show are there in the show notes. Just scroll down and check out the show notes, right? And I wish you very best. So very productive Feb. So this year Feb has only 28 days and the next leap year is in 2023, 20, I guess, you know, 29 days. No? So this uh, week, uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, Feb is 28 days. So have a great productive and healthy month ahead and take care goodbye until next month